Welcome to our channel, Love Ireland. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Today we take you to the Giants Causeway in County Antrim, Northern Ireland. The Giant's Causeway is an area of about 40,000 interlocking basalt columns, the result of an ancient volcanic fissure eruption. It is located in County Antrim on the north coast of Northern Ireland, about 3 miles or 4.8 kilometers northeast of the town of Bushmills. It was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1986 and a National Nature Reserve in 1987 by the Department of the Environment for Northern Ireland. In a 2005 poll of Radio Times readers, the Giant's Causeway was named the fourth greatest natural wonder in the United Kingdom. The tops of the columns form stepping stones that lead from the cliff foot and disappear under the sea. Most of the columns are hexagonal, although there are also some with four, five, seven or eight sides. The tallest are about 12 meters or 39 feet high, and the solidified lava in the cliffs is 28 meters or 92 feet thick in places. Much of the Giants Causeway and Causeway Coast World Heritage Site is owned and managed by the National Trust. It is one of the most popular tourist attractions in Northern Ireland, receiving over 998,000 visitors in 2019. Access to the Giants Causeway is free of charge, it is not necessary to go via the visitor center, which charges a fee.
The remainder of the site is owned by the Crown Estate and several private landowners. According to legend, the columns are the remains of a causeway built by a giant. The story goes that the Irish giant Finn Mac Cool, from the Fenian cycle of Gaelic mythology, was challenged to a fight by the Scottish giant Bean and Donna. Finn accepted the challenge and built the causeway across the North Channel so that the two giants could meet. In one version of the story, Finn defeats Bean and Donna. In another, Finn hides from Bean and Donna when he realizes that his foe is much bigger than he is. Finn's wife, Sad, disguises Finn as a baby and tucks him in a cradle. When Bean and Donna sees the size of the baby, he reckons that its father, Finn, must be a giant among giants. He flees back to Scotland in fright, destroying the causeway behind him so that Finn would be unable to chase him down. Across the sea, there are identical basalt columns, a part of the same ancient lava flow, at Fingal's Cave on the Scottish Isle of Stafford, and it is possible that the story was influenced by this. In overall Irish mythology, Finn McCool is not a giant but a hero with supernatural abilities, contrary to what this particular legend may suggest. In fairy and folk tales of the Irish peasantry, 1888, it is noted that, over time, the pagan gods of Ireland grew smaller and smaller in the popular imagination, until they turned into the fairies.
the pagan heroes grew bigger and bigger, until they turned into the giants. There are no surviving pre-Christian stories about the Giant's Causeway, but it may have originally been associated with the Fomorians. The Fumhore are a race of supernatural beings in Irish mythology who were sometimes described as giants and who may have originally been part of a pre-Christian pantheon. The Bishop of Derry visited the site in 1692. The existence of the Causeway was announced to the wider world the following year by the presentation of a paper to the Royal Society from Sir Richard Bull Kelly, a fellow of Trinity College, Dublin. The Giant's Causeway received international attention when Dublin artist Susanna Drury made watercolour paintings of it in 1739, they won Drury the first award presented by the Royal Dublin Society in 1740 and were engraved in 1743. In 1765, an entry on the Causeway appeared in Volume 12 of the French Encyclopédie, which was informed by the engravings of Drury's work. The engraving of the East Prospect appeared in a 1768 volume of plates published for the Encyclopédie. In the caption to the plates, French geologist Nicolas Desmarest suggested, for the first time in print, that such structures were volcanic in origin. The site first became popular with tourists during the 19th century, particularly after the opening of the Giant's Causeway Tramway. Only after the National Trust took over its care in the 1960s were some of the vestiges of commercialism removed. Visitors can walk over the basalt columns that are at the edge of the sea, a half-mile walk from the entrance of the site. The causeway was without a permanent visitor's centre between 2000 and 2012, as the previous building, built in 1986, burned down in 2000. While preliminary approval was given for a publicly funded, but privately managed, development by then Environment Minister and DUP member Arlene Foster in 2007, the public funding was frozen due to a perceived conflict of interest between the proposed private developer and the DUP. Ultimately, the private developer dropped a legal challenge to the publicly funded plan, and the new visitor center was officially opened by 2012. Its construction was funded by the National Trust, the Northern Ireland Tourist Board, the Heritage Lottery Fund and public donations. Since opening, the new visitor centre has garnered mixed reviews from those visiting the Causeway, for its pricing, design, contents and placement across the Causeway Walk descent. In 2018, the visitor centre was visited by 1,011,473 people. There was some controversy regarding the content of some exhibits in the visitor center, which refer to the young earth creationist view of the age of the earth. While these inclusions were welcomed by the chairman of the Northern Irish Evangelical Group, the Caleb Foundation, the National Trust stated that the inclusions formed only a small part of the exhibition and that the Trust fully supports the scientific explanation for the creation of the stones 60 million years ago. An online campaign to remove creationist material was launched in 2012, and following this, 
the trust carried out a review and concluded that they should be amended to have the scientific explanation on the causeway's origin as their primary emphasis. Creationist explanations are still mentioned but presented as a traditional belief of some religious communities rather than a competing explanation for the causeway's origins. Some of the structures in the area, having been subject to several million years of weathering, resemble objects, such as the organ and giant's boot structures. Other features include many reddish, weathered low columns known as giant's eyes, created by the displacement of basalt boulders, the shepherd's steps, the honeycomb, the giant's harp, the chimney stacks, the giant's gate and the camel's hump. The area is a haven for seabirds, such as fulmar, petrel, cormorant, shag, redshank, Guillemot and Razorbill, while the weathered rock formations host numerous plant types, including sea spleenwort, hare's foot trefoil, vernal squill, sea fescue and frog orchid. A stromatolite colony was reportedly found at the Giant's Causeway in October 2011, an unusual find, as stromatolites are more commonly found in warmer waters with higher saline content than that found at the causeway. The Belfast Derry Railway line run by Northern Ireland Railways connects to Coleraine and along the Coleraine Portrush branch line to Portrush. Locally, Ulsterbus provides connections to the railway stations.
There is a scenic walk of seven miles from Portrush alongside Dunluce Castle and the Giant's Causeway and Bushmills Railway. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, Love Ireland. And don't forget to hit the bell notification.